real ice trails, real real contrails disappear in just a few minutes. There's a massive program going on, and they admit it. Now, if you just Google these terms, all these universities, Department of Energy, NASA brags, oh, look, the Earth's 20 percent darker satellite photos of the whole country covered they really are revenge of the nerd scientist who happen to be eugenicist on wild power trips dr michael kaufman again there's no question of that it's just phenomenal when you get back to the chemtrail issues i'm not an expert on chemtrails but what i do know is that they're a high enough elevation that they actually form kind of a cirrus cloud formation. Now, if you know the politics and the science of global warming, my man caused global warming, this is what they have predicted right from the very beginning. It's inherent in every single mo uh, climate model that there is. It's at about six miles in elevation. What you find is that more cirrus clouds are formed, which trap the heat. It's a positive feedback mechanism. I'm not going to get more complicated than that or you won't understand it. But no, the Earth is, needs this as its shield. Expl no, go ahead and give people the science. It basically says that with... Now, first of all, you have to understand the carbon dioxide itself cannot trap much more heat. Very, very small percentage, a couple percent, and that's about it. Because it's the wavelengths, the wave bands that it traps heat in are already saturated, so it cannot do much more. Therefore, the little that it does do, they claim, are going to create more clouds, more uh, thunderstorms, which when they decay, they create more cirrus clouds. Cirrus clouds trap the heat. Low elevation rain clouds reflect the heat or the sun. Just the opposite. It's a negative feedback. In a positive feedback in the cirrus clouds, the radiation emitted by the Earth is trapped again and remitted down. That means that the upper atmosphere heat faster than the Earth's surface. And this is well explained in our second DVD, the Emerging Science, Global Warming Emerging Science DVD that Alex now has. Uh, it is absolutely night and day. What the models predicted was going to happen the last 40 to 50 years, and what has actually happened, they're not the same at all. It's, it's now, like Dr. Coppin, explain this to me, though, because you know, his other big major films like the great global warming swindle, they have all these climatologists and scientists and physicists from around the world, literally the top names. There's now 37,000 of them have sent a letter and petition yeah. to the government. The government won't even read it, won't allow them in testimony. Only Al Gore, who lies and says he invented everything from Kitty Hawk to, you know, to fire, uh, is, 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 is the only expert up there. He openly owns one of the carbon companies and said, what's wrong with me making money? I mean, it's the outrageousness of this. But, but also they say it's not just the heat from the sun. It's that different type of nuclei, yeah. particles, right. come into the atmosphere. Can you explain that? Yes, there's two. And it's, it's again explained uh, in much better graphics than it did in the first one in this new emerging science DVD, really shows very clearly it's not the total amount of energy that the sun emits, but the kind of energy. You have incoming cosmic radiation from exploding supernovae from out in the uh, galaxy and so forth that eventually get to Earth. Those, and it's been shown in experiments now to be correct, those cosmic radiation particles, when they enter the Earth's surface, or enter the Earth's atmosphere, they start to condense out and ionize and create water droplets. When they create water droplets, clouds eventually form, and when you have clouds, low elevation clouds, if you've ever flown an airport, uh, airplane above these clouds, it is a bright white. That's because the sun is reflecting off of those clouds. Now let me understand, energy. so it's almost like just the space rays, not just the sun's rays, and this whole spectrum of different particles Absolutely. come in like, like microscopic meteorites and create almost a uh, energy field uh, which then uh, generates the nuclei to allow the rain droplets to form so it's a beautiful en it's a beautiful engine it's not a crime and carbon dioxide is what plants breathe it's not a chemical weapon that'll ah, kill you water's good <laughs> oxygen's good it's not with al qaeda Absolutely. In fact, we can probably have three to four hundred percent increase in our carbon dioxide, and the Earth would be much better off for it. Both plant productivity, food production, and it will not hurt us. Uh, in fact, I've seen those studies that during uh, uh, during some of the warming periods with the dinosaurs uh, were the most plentiful. That it was many times higher, and that yeah. the Earth was much more tropical. Yeah, absolutely. Probably about ten times greater concentration during those that period of time 
uh, and the earth was much more tropical. Uh, vegetation was flourishing and abundant. And every time, in fact, we have the science has actually shown that there's been a 12% increase in food production, global food production, because of the increased carbon dioxide we've had the last 50 years. There's nothing negative about carbon dioxide. It's all positive, but yet they're calling it a pollutant, and because it's a pollutant, then they can control our lives. But I've done the di the dihydrogen monoxide joke with people at, at restaurants yeah. on the street, and right. I tend to go out with a camera and do it. Because you can say, hey, we need to restrict carbon dioxide, right? And they go, yes, it's evil. And I go, what about dihydrogen monoxide? It's in the water. And almost every adult, even people in suits downtown, will go, yes, ban it. It's water. I assure the viewers, people that support this, that water is not bad. Absolutely. You know, it is amazing. We have been so sensitized in our educational process that anything chemical is bad for us. Well, I'm afraid that anything that we eat, drink, or otherwise is chemical, and the fact that we have this aversion to the name chemical uh, is been ingrained in us in our educational process, in the television ads, all the rest of it, so that we just re re coil away from it, and we shouldn't. We have to understand what it is and then treat it accordingly. Well, what about the brainwashing? Did you know that there are scores of video games where where the zombies yeah. are, are carbon dioxide blobs and the kids shoot them and then it's just total brainwashing in the schools and it the is. New York Times reports that kids go home and write mock tickets to their mother because they take a hot bath and the mother goes, I'm glad they're ordering me around this. I mean, they're turning us into a total Stasi society. What about the Green Bill with the home inspections and the federal language about... Uh, they can kick you out of your house, no judge, no jury. Just, I mean, this is total tyranny. It is total tyranny. And you and I have, and others have been warning the people for 15 years or more about this very thing. It's now right in front of us, and we have a last opportunity to stop it by calling your congressmen and senators and saying, no, I'm going to throw you out of office if you vote for these things. And there's just not one thing. There's a dozen of them out there. It would be best if we just shut down Congress and they didn't do anything for four years. I agree. Now, for those that don't know, dihydrogen monoxide is the, the scientific term for water. And I was just making the point that, that, that ask your friends or family, but, but put it in a carbon dioxide debate. Say, for the environment, sh shouldn't we have a carbon uh, uh, tax on dihydrogen monoxide? You can also give them the scientific name for salt. And nine yeah. times out of ten, they'll say, ban it. And right. Now, now you, said, you said there's about a dozen. Uh, there's the climate change bill, the carbon tax bills, the water, uh, Clean Water Restoration Act. Uh, there's the rewilding. All these things you warned about, they're now trying to ram through right now because they think Obama's got control of the entire government. Tell us about some of the things that uh, they're trying to push through. Well, I think that the water bill, the Clean Water Bill reenactment is really dangerous. It basically puts... You're talking about our economy with the cap-and-trade legislation. With the water, you're taking control over water, which you need every single day to live. And if the federal government controls the water of every acre of land in the United States, it controls you and I, period. I mean, it controls our crop production. It controls everything. And as a consequence, uh, you look at what these bills do, and every single one of them draws control over a basic thing in our society that we need to have to live. And once that is done, then the federal government basically controls us. You have no choice in the matter. You have to do what they say, just like they did in the old Soviet Union, or you're thrown out of your house, you're, you're prevented from buying food, you're, you name it. And I'm not saying it's going to happen next year. But they have that potential. They have the right to do it now once these laws pass. And there has been no time in all of history where a bad bill like that has been passed, legislation been in the Roman Empire or whenever, that it hasn't been abused. Well, listen, I have the head time. of... I, exactly. I have the head of City Year federally funded these youth brigades in red and black uniforms. People can yeah. Google City Year and watch them doing their chanting and drilling. And where everything's so bankrupt now, you have to get a job with the government out of high school doing this. And it says, I have national newscasts saying they're going to have quasi-governmental groups, mainly young, stupid, uh, you know, uh, ignorant, power-tripping young people. And it already sh has shown them on the news that say climate police out shouting people down like Mao Zedong's 
uh, youth brigades. That, actually, that's how they're modeled. And, and they even have little blue Obama books that they carry. And just like in China, I'm not making this up. I have the newscast waving them as they scream at you. And already in Austin, if you park an SUV by Barton Springs, they are slashing tires. They're out there enforcing I mean, folks, I'm not kidding when I say they're already here, and I have the head of city here saying they're going to use them to enforce on us. I mean, yeah. this is nightmarish, Dr. Kaufman. It is. Brown shirts and under Hitler, uh, the Red Brigade under uh, in China, you name it. It's, we're following the same pattern of all this desp all these despots in the past. Can't we see that? 